Good morning, family, and welcome to Morning Heart Devotion with Dr. Chung Shik Yong, brought to you by our Heavenly Parents Holy Community. Let's begin by greeting our Heavenly Parent and True Parents. Chun Jian, Chan Pumonim Ke, Kyungbe, Baro. And now for our family pledge, Kajang Meng Se, Il, Chaneo Guk Juin, Uri Kajangan. 참사랑을 중심하고 본향 땅을 찾아 본연의 창조의 상인 지상 천국과 천상 천국을 장건할 것을 맹세하나이다. 이 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님을 모시어 전주의 대표적 가정이 되며 중심적 가정이 되어 가정에서는 효자, 국가에서는 중심, 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 성자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 3. 천혜어국 주인, 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 4대 심정권과 3대 왕권과 황족권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 4. 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님의 창조의 상인 천주대 가족을 형성하여 자유와 평화와 통일과 행복의 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 오 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 매일 주체적 천상세계와 대상적 지상 세계의 통일을 향해 전진적 발전을 촉진화할 것을 맹세하나이다. 6. 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 하늘 부모님과 참 부모님의 대신 가정으로서 찬원을 움직이는 가정이 되어 하늘의 축복을 주변에 연결시키는 가정을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 7. 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 본연의 혈통과 연결된 위하는 생활을 통하여 심정문화 세계를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. 8. 천혜어국 주인 우리 가정은 참사랑을 중심하고 천여극 시대를 맞이하여 절대 신앙, 절대 사랑, 절대 복종으로 신인의 일체 이상을 이루어 지상 천국과 천상 천국의 해방권과 석방권을 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. <웃음> And now to open us up with prayer this morning, I'd like to invite up Mr. Serge Brousseau. Thank you. Let's pray. Our dearest Heavenly Parent, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the beauty of nature outside at this time of the year. We feel that uh, we feel revived by the beauty of creation and the love that you are expressing through this creation. Heavenly Parent, we also are so inspired uh, by the testimony of our young people who have been uh, witnessing and gaining spiritual children. We pray that we can uh, inherit from them and that we can indeed revive our spirit to uh, see, to seek to uh, gain uh, spiritual children and to reach out to your children. Heavenly Parent, we are so grateful to be together as one community online. We uh, appreciate the effort that Dr. Young is making every day to share your word to share the word of our true parents that they have given by totally investing themselves throughout their lives and are continuing to do so to our true mother. We really uh, are so uh, grateful for her heart, uh, which is seeking to uh, reach out to uh, the entire world of your parent to really bring your love. And uh, we pray that uh, you can guide uh, the elder son nation to fulfill its responsibility indeed to live for the sake of the world. We also pray for the uh, uh, nation of Canada as a daughter nation to fulfill its responsibility at this time. 
Canada has a lot to offer in terms of uh, natural resources and human resources, and we pray that we can fulfill our small portion of responsibility. Please guide us at this time. We understand that we are living in a very historical time with our true mother. It's golden age of any parent. We want to learn from one another. We pray that you can teach us today uh, through the word, through Dr. Young, through our fellowship, and that we can continue to grow every day. Thank you so much for your the blessings in our lives. And uh, we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. And I offer you this prayer this morning. In my name is Serge Boisseau, Bless Central, of the Brussels Bless Central family. Adieu. 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 Thank you, Sergio, for your beautiful prayer. Kamsahamida. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Serge, for your prayer. And now with that, brothers and sisters, let's go into our breakouts and share our appreciations this morning and come back in a few minutes.
back, brothers and sisters. Hope you enjoyed your breakout. Uh, I'd like to share that with you today. So first, let me invite up uh, Mrs. Etsuko Kajisa to share first. Hi. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Everybody. Hi. Um, today, uh, I have a break room with Milhan Sam. Uh, when I meet Milhan Sam, I need to tell him I'm really grateful for that uh, 430 cup of blessing. He did, did only uh, 40 days. So I can't believe his determination, strong determination, uh, second generation, oh, wonderful. Only 40 days with a uh, wife and children sometimes maybe. So but, uh, um, I have a lot of hope. I didn't uh, accomplish in uh, horizontal, uh, uh, yeah, horizontal 430 couple blessing yet, but uh, a lot of hope if people, if like Amir Hansan's determination, only 40 days we can accomplish the 430 couple blessing. So this is uh, so grateful. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell Amir Hansan finally. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Every day, every day. Of course. Uh, my grateful wizard, Dr. Yon, or nothing. So thank you so much. Kamsamida, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it's Kusan, and I did not pay her to say that. Um, <laughs> full disclosure. And it did take a, an entire lifetime to come to that point. And uh, I think there's so much more to grow for sure. Yeah. Okay, uh, to share next, let me invite up Mr. Pierre Beauregard. Good morning. Good morning from Montreal, Canada. Ah, yeah, Pierre, yay, happy to see you. Thank you. So I, I want to express a great, my gratefulness for the gratefulness point of Milhan, who mentioned about it. He's grateful for doc, the Trinity of Dr. Young, uh, Joshua Holmes, no. and uh, Naokimi Oshiroda, who said represent emotion, intellect, and will. I'll let you guess who, but uh, I think you know that Dr. Young is emotion. Uh, intellect and will, I think you can figure out pretty easily who they are. <laughs> so that was uh, that was very nice. And I, I express also gratefulness for my brother and pastor of Montreal, Serge Brasso, who prayed because we are trying to go, we've been committing every Monday to go out and witness. Mm. And so I appreciate his commitment uh, to this. And uh, we're three brothers together, over 60. I think Serge is over 60. I mean, he's a bit younger than me. And uh, we're witnessing to 20-year-olds. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if they can be inspired by us, but at least we try. Yeah. And uh, we hope to see the witnessing spirit come back to Montreal. And uh, like we all experienced when we were first in the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, that's my main point of gratefulness for today. Thank wow. you very much. Thank you so much, Pierre. You really doing witnessing very well, and also always translation. Come, Samida, Pierre. Samida. Thank you, Uncle Pierre. You're sharing today, and uh, with that, brothers and sisters, let's now prepare our hearts and uh, welcome up Dr. Young for our morning heart devotion today. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace. 안녕하십니까? Today, I'd like to talk about youth and students for peace, YSP from True Mother's Anthology, book one. So please read. Youth and students for peace. You were born as part of our second generation, thanks to true parents. You are different from other people of the world. Hence, I am telling you that you must grow up well. 
The 3,500 young people who have assembled here today must follow true parents and become the personification of their path, the truth they have given, and their love and love. To accomplish this, you must not put yourselves in the position of wanting only to receive. Just as true parents have done, you must practice true love. You must have a heart that gives gives, and still wants to give and share. You must create such an environment. This responsibility lies ahead of you. This is how how we can achieve a world of harmony. I said you are pure water, didn't I? Clear water, however, must not be stagnant. It must continue to flow and give birth to many new lives wherever it flows. True parents have a dream. Just like God's dream, their dream is not having any muddy muddy water in sight. Everything must become as clear as water. In other words, all people around the world must attend true parents. The absence of an owner and the resulting discord among the many who desire to take over the empty position of owner are the cause of various types of problems the world faces today. This is why rich power countries are preparing for war in order to gain even more riches. They are producing weapons. On our way to a peaceful united world, weapons are unnecessary. There is a Bible verse that says that spears and swords will be melted to make farming tools to make plows and plowshares. Yet, nations are wasting money on unnecessary things like wars. The earth is now in great pain. Desertification is afflicting not only China, but also the United States. With the ice cap melting at the North Pole, the sea level is rising. This will destroy the ecosystem. Human disorderliness has resulted in many kinds of destruction to the natural ecosystems, contaminating even the oceans. As a result, the coral reefs, which are essential to the sea, are also dying. When we think of all these points, can we just stand still? Please have dreams. I will master a field in which true parents desire me to work. I will become a great scholar. I will become a famous person. Please have dreams of that type. I sincerely hope you become Sangwa students who achieve true parents' dreams. Thank you. True mother said young people must follow the true parents and become the uh, personification of their past, the truths they have given, and their love and life. To accomplish this, you must not put yourself in the position of the wanting only to receive. Just as true parents have done, you must practice true love. You must have a heart that gives and gives and still wants to give and share. You must create such an environment. True mother said that if you want to become a young person who practices true love, You need to have a heart that gives and gives and still wants to give and share. This is really, for me, this point is very important. I believe that you can become a master wherever you go. If you just practice this principle of the giving that true parents taught, we can build a foundation for witnessing and a pastoral ministry and life of faith in, in no time if you give first. When I learned this principle of giving and giving and giving, my life was completely changed. I'm so grateful, even though this very simple principle, whenever giving something, I always can get spiritual strength and power. Sometimes I feel so tired and exhausted. Then this is the sign, no more battery. That means 
I need to give away not just only materials, my heart, my emotion, you know, my mind. Oh, to try to serving, try to giving for others. Then immediately I can get back my my battery. Wow, this is an amazing universal principle. That's why wherever I go, I have a confidence. I can settle down. Why? I know, since I know this principle, giving and giving and giving. And immediately settle down any situation. My heart becomes very peaceful. I know how to get energy and power from the heaven. What's the principle? Giving and giving and giving. Truly giving. Giving my heart. Giving my heart, mind, giving my dose to the devotion, and then really serving. I try to deny myself that oh, always God intervene in me. That's why I feel, I feel wherever I go, go to even Siberia and any place in Africa, any place, I have a confidence. I can settle down in any place. As long as I, I, I use this principle of giving. Giving principle is really incredible, amazing. Why are you so tired? Because you do not give. You know, why give up on the way? Because just want to live for your own sake. However, according to universal principle, giving and giving and giving and completely forgetting what I have given, and still want to give more. I really love this principle of giving. I really love it. Since I understood this principle, I tell you, I had life-changing experience from young time. So when I apply this principle in my own ministry, everywhere I feel so much promising, so much hope and so much power to go forward, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. So uh, do not uh, try to receive love first, the mother said. Give love first and love will be created. But if we try to reach, just only try to receive first, your desire has no limit. Therefore, we should not ask for love and grace from anyone but create it ourselves. To do that, we give and forget, and give and forget. Still try to want to give more in very beautiful principle. Living divine principle, and then, then I, once again, I'm going to talk about the process of creation of the universe. Was it created or did it evolve? So please read. Section five, the process of the creation of the universe and its growing period. The process of the creation of the universe. According to the account of the creation of the universe in Genesis chapter one, amidst the primordial state of chaos, void and darkness, God created light. God next separated the waters below the firmament from the waters above it. He then divided the land from the ocean, created plants, fish, birds, mammals, and so on, and finally made humankind. All this took a period of six days. From this account, we can surmise that the process of creating the universe took some period of time represented by six days. Considering that the account of the creation of the universe recorded in the Bible, nearly coincides with the findings of modern scientific research, we are reassured that this biblical record must be a revelation from God. The universe did not suddenly spring forth complete without regard to the flow of time. In fact, its origin and development took an enormous length of time. Hence, the biblical period of six days for the completion of the universe is not to be reckoned by the number of literal 
sunrises, and sunsets. It symbolizes six ordered periods of time in the creation process. Yes, based on this uh, EDP content, let's study Father's Word. Father's Word is always very much practical and very much interesting. Let's study. We should undergo the process of love in order to develop and propagate. Nowadays, people say people are the outcome of the evolution of monkeys. These crazy people should be struck by lightning. I'll ask you a question. In the development of an amoeba, did the male start developing by itself or did it reciprocate with the female and develop? Answer me. Did the male, a limp male, develop by itself? In order to develop from a low life form, the male and female have to go through the process of love. If not, then you cannot develop. Do you disregard this matter? They say it is the same centering on the form and structure. Can a monkey become a man because the bones of man and monkeys are the same? Stupid people, they should be struck by lightning. Oh my goodness. Okay. This, the distinction between species is strict. No one has the authority to horizontally occupy the different species which have passed through the gate of love. Even God cannot do so. There are 107 chemical elements, right? Among the chemical elements, if you try to combine one element with another different element, if it doesn't match, even if God would try to combine them, it wouldn't mix. No matter how much you put it in a test tube, would it work? No matter what you do, it would not combine. It cannot be done horizontally. The classification of species is very strict because it is absolute. They claim absolute value and they can propose before God, the presiding being of lover over heaven and earth. All beings seek the love of God. Plants eat minerals and animals eat plants, all in order to go here. By going to a high place, by going close to people, they pursue to reach a nerve cell which God can love. This is the ideal. Do you understand this? Yes. Everything endeavors to find God's love. People, too, have to sacrifice for God's love. The power of love seeks to sacrifice, right? When love repeatedly develops, it can go until God's love. Therefore, the couple with such a concept of love is the treasure of the universe. Thus, all of the universe, heaven and earth, people, and all creation has to protect this. But Satan broke this down. The concept of love comes first. God created all beings in peers. When God created man and woman, what did God create centering on? He created centering on the concept of love. That is why the concept of love comes first. Because there is love first. When man tries to become one with love, he has to be together with woman. It is the same when woman becomes one with a man, then she can have love. God created man and woman because God created the principle that unity is possible only through love. Nothing but love can unite a man and woman. Money, power, and knowledge cannot. Thank you. Was it created or did it evolve? The, cla uh, the class uh, classification of God's uh, species is very, very strict. Monkey is a monkey. Man is a man. Tiger is a tiger. The species is very strict, very clear. You know, the power of God's true love is that output is greater than input. We need to know that. 
We need to know the, what the principle of true love. Principle of true love is what? Output much, much greater than input. But according to you know, evolution, it's something not like that. God's creation is a pair system. So evolution did not explain clearly, you know, pair system, man and woman and male and female. How do they explain about that? Can man can become woman, woman can become a man, and that they have, you know, according to evol evolution, have that kind of process? Nonsense. There is no concept of love and sacrifice in, evolu uh, in evolution. Right? True love always requires sacrifice. Beautiful. Evolution cannot explain the attribute of the true love. Right? Cannot explain. True love is giving and giving and sacrificing and sacrificing and invest and then still want to give more. There is nothing to give and still shedding tears. How can you explain about that? The character of the love. A man cannot evolve into a woman. And a woman cannot evolve into a man. This is an eternal God's pair system. Without pair system, how to create and how to, how to multiply the descendants cannot reproduce anything. Therefore, the theory of evolution is completely or wrong. Garbage theory. Completely wrong. That's why if you believe in, believe in about, uh, evolution, then your concept of the, about the, your moral standard, what will happen? Can you imagine about that? It is really important to know God's creation. It is really important to know not just only God, God is our Father. I am children of God. This is very important. That's why divine principle mentioned very clearly. Was it created or did it evolve? Today's youth ministry, what kind of person is reborn? Let's study. What kind of person is reborn? We, Unification Church members, should clear up our own sins ancestral sins and lineage sins after coming into the church, but we see members who can't do so and stop in the middle. Why do church members get tired on the way and stay in the same place? It means that I have not truly been reborn after all, after entering the church. So what kind of person is a reborn human being? In a word, a person who is born again is a person who can take on the sorrows of God. Now is the time to take on the sorrows of God and true parents. It is time to realize how grievous and sorrowful God is because of the fall of man. We need to know the sorrow that God was expelled from this earth, the Garden of Eden, from Satan, due to the fall of Adam and Eve. Why do, ch do church members get tired on the way and stay in the same place? This is because in the end, they could not have the experience of being born again. You know, to experience being born again, you must first regard the what as your life. God's word is your lifeline. Most important thing. You know, you have to know the taste of the God's word through the word and experience of resurrection through the word. We have to always yearn for the word and live uh, immersed in it. Very important point, you know. How can I have a first uh, experience of resurrection through the word? Because God's word is God's love, right? That's why you really always long for God's word. 
When you truly long God's word, and then you can realize that God's word is God. God's word is God's love. And then when you God's word touch your spirit mind, many of them have incredible experience and tears and tears and tears and tears. And the entire life will change. Experience of the right, being born again. Secondly, you have to have experience being loved through your able, whom you love. Only two, those who have been loved can keep love. This is very important, my brothers and sisters. When you were young, of course, we are giving and giving, but formation stage, you need to receive enough of love from your own physical father and mother, you from your own physical brothers and sisters. You know, formations, they need to receive enough love and growing very well. One who receives uh, enough love from parents and from the neighbor and from the people, and this guy, this boy and this girl, who surely know how to give back love without experiencing to receive love, don't know how to give love. That's a formation state. You need to have experience. You need to meet good father and mother, your physical father, good father and mother in the church. You need to meet good able and the need to experience of the reverse. I really thank you to Reverend Yonghan Lee. To be frank with you, I love him more, my, more than my own father and mother. I had really incredible experience of rebirth because of his love, because of his work. He's showing such great exemplary life. Really heart touching experience. That's why, who is a lucky guy? Number one, you need to meet good physical parents. You are not, you are lucky guy. Lucky one. Secondly, in the school, you need to meet really great teacher. Of course, these days, not easy to find that kind of teacher just only selling the knowledge, you know, and then you just do homework and then finish. However, for me, I had incredible experience through my teachers when I elementary school and middle school and high school. Wow. And then at the church, you need to meet incredible able, loving you, always loving you, caring you, like real parents. And through that, you can have incredible experience of the rebirth. Third, you need to have experience of raising Cain from Abel's position. While raising Cain, you must weep a lot because of Cain and experience God's heart. So through the, these experience, especially when you witnessing and then take care of Cain, sometimes you know, Cain cheat you, run away, and all kind of the situation, but still without giving up loving him and keeping him and take care of him, and then you start to feel God's heart is like that. Through restoration of Cain, you can have experience of the revival. Through these kind of experiences, you become incre uh, in increasingly aware of the circumstances and sorrow of God and true parents and try to take responsibility. A person who is born again is, you know what, a person finally who can take on the Sorrows of God. Now is the time to take on the sorrows, sorrows of God and true parents. If the sorrow of God and true parents always arise in your heart, then you are truly born again. And have already become a much a person by becoming filial sons or, or, or daughter. How about I'm saying? Can you arise in your heart all the time? God just sorrow? Like our true parents? 
can you have that kind of experience arising in your heart? Whenever you think about true parents, they are sorrowful heart. And then naturally your tears come down, never stopping, every moment, anytime. You can have that kind of heart always arising in your heart, God's sorrowful heart and true parents' sorrowful heart. And Father said, you are truly, truly, you are the being of the reborn. Very important, my brothers and sisters. Next. True parent sorrow is that God's will has not yet been accomplished on this earth. We need to know that true parents are people with great sorrow. As true father went along the way of the will, he had no time to think about himself or his family. He had to abandon his parents and he had to abandon his family too. Nevertheless, true father shed tears until now for the will of God and for poor humankind. That is why we who follow true parents must feel something well up from within our hearts. So what should well up from our hearts? It is God's sorrow. It is tears for poor heaven. Do you have such a sad heart for God and true parents? If not, it is evidence that we have not yet experienced a true rebirth. Wow, this kind of the word really st stimulate me and also I need to really reflect on that. True Father took responsibility for God's sorrows, harm, wishes, and shed blood, sweat, and tears for the rest of his life. The important thing is the course of the following true parents and God's will is that you have to feel something well up. You need to well up. You need to well up from within your heart without realizing it. That should be God's sorrow, God's bitter heart. It is a tears for poor heavenly parents. If I do not always feel God's sorrow in my heart, I am not yet a born again person. How can a person who knows God's sorrow get tired on the way? Do you have such a sorrowful heart for God and true parents? If not, it is a proof, proof that we have not yet experienced our true reverse. When you think about God's will and true parents, tears that you cannot control yourself must flow from your eyes. Very deep content, deep sorrow. That kind of the person we call filial son and filial daughters. Filial son and daughters always that kind of the experience always well up from within their heart regarding God's sorrowful heart. Next. Listening to the testimonies of those who have had spiritual communication with heaven, there is one thing in common. People who do spiritual works face heaven purely at first, and most of them experience two kinds of sadness when doing spiritual work. First, they feel God's sorrow, and after that, they feel human beings' sorrow. However, the spiritual works of spiritual people who have such an experience often stop after three or seven years because as their character and nature are mixed with them over time, they cannot fully perform the spiritual work of heaven. If spiritual people do not overcome their humanity, their spiritual work will come to an end. When anyone can communicate with the spirit world, their self-centeredness becomes greater and heaven can no longer cooperate. The Holy Spirit will guide you if you completely deny yourself 
overcome your individuality, and have a heart that can reach heaven purely, but we cannot. This is the limitation of spiritual people. Yes. As we grow well spiritually and in stages, we do not know when we reach the stage of experience in God's sorrow. However, along the way, it can be very dangerous if we experience the spirit world due to some spiritual phenomena. If you have a spiritual experience without spiritual growth and not being able to control the spirit world, you are usually under the control of evil spirit. When an immature person has a spiritual experience, they can become a very arrogant and fall into self-centeredness. Anyone of make it, anyone about you know connect with the spiritual world directly. You see what's the what what's that about the ending? Every phenomenon I never heard that turn out as a good result. That's why. Do not rely on the spiritualist. You need to grow up step by step, formation stage, growth stage, finally completion stage. And we get to know that God's experience, God's experience, uh, the experience of God's sorrow. Next. As a result, those who engage in spiritual exchanges are taken over by the spirit world and are easy to go astray. It would be good for people to experience God's sorrow through spiritual works and return to the earthly world to share it with people who do not know God's sorrow. But most of them get dominated by the spirit world. When we see true father, he is the one who always gives orders to the spirit world and makes them run errands. Fallen humans are under the control of most of the spirit world. Many spiritual people like to be in contact with the spirit world, so it becomes a hobby and later a habit. Many spiritual people sell their father's name to gain power and subdue other people. The problem is that when they come into contact with the spirit world, they should get to know God and true parents' sad circumstances and the world of their hearts and develop gradually but most of them will be used by the spirit world. So we must grow spiritually and become those who can take responsibility for even God's sorrow. So you must be a person who can always spread God's sorrow to those around you. And since I know God, since I know the divine principle, since I met Reverend Yohani, since I met through fathers, through parents, and receiving guidance, my ultimate goal is Heavenly Father, wherever I go, how can I com convey your heart? How can I introduce your reality, your sorrowful heart? Many people do not know. Many people just say that gratitude, 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 positive thinking, just happiness. Why you are so sad? You know, life is very much enjoy. But what I learned from the Father, God's reality, God's sorrowful heart. That's why we need to reach it and understand that. We have to be responsible his sorrow and through parents' sorrow. That is our portion of responsibility as a filial sons and daughters. The final slide. In our church, there is not just a problem with spiritual people. There are many members who do not attend worship or stay away from the church because they lost motivation after joining the church and doing activities and become engrossed in their own worries and concerns. Now, we need to worry more about the will of God and true parents than our own worries. But many people are more engrossed in their circumstances 
than in heavens. As a result, they cannot be resurrected. In other words, it is impossible to lay the foundation of substance beyond the foundation of faith. Yes, thank you, Heavenly Honey. In order to take on God's sorrow, we need to practice bearing the crosses of others beyond our own personal cross. That is salvation, which is witnessing. And at the church, you also must take on the heavy responsibility of your able and try to solve it. Try to help him to reduce his burden. You have to grow in faith like this and eventually go to the uh, stage of knowing God's circumstances and taking responsibility for God's sorrow. Many people end up wasting their time while being dominated by their own worries and crosses. However, what we need to know is that when we take on the crosses of others, worry about crosses of heavenly parents and true parents, and take responsibility for their sorrows, finally, at the end, we can inherit God's heart. Thank you very much. And uh, today, yeah, today our living testimony, I think what I know the someone, uh, I think uh, our MC can introduce. Here again, Dr. Young. I think what a powerful message today. I think many of us took many key words to uh, transform our lives and others' lives. And for our living testimony, I'm very happy to introduce Zenas Rush. Um, there's a lot I could say about this brother. Uh, he has served several years as a youth pastor, or the youth pastor in, in uh, Virginia, and is Desiree Contreras' spiritual father, who shared yesterday. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, he is someone, I can say, puts his whole heart and mind and spirit into raising up youth. And um, I know I was first drawn to him because of his ingenuity and genius um, when it comes to that. So with that, let's welcome up Mr. Zenas Rush. And also Miran's uh, disciple. <laughs> yes, he is my second disciple. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am Zenas Rush, the person of myth that everyone keeps talking about. <laughs> And uh, this is the story on how I became a spiritual father. <laughs> so uh, I preface this by, by saying that, that, that this has been an incredibly interesting and fulfilling journey because I do not have any, or I did not have any formal witnessing training prior. Um, yeah, so uh, keep that in mind. So I... So I work at Starbucks and I still work at Starbucks and how I, how I met the kid who would become my spiritual daughter is that uh, she, she transferred into my store from some other place and eventually we became friends, you know, cause our workplace environment is very open and friendly with each other. Starbucks is very unique in that sense. Um, and, and so, you know, just on uh, some one occasion, we decided we were going to go hang out and, and watch a movie, right? And before, and like we had like an, about like a, what was it, 30 minutes, an hour-ish before, um, we were just talking, you know, and eventually the topic of religion came up. And, and so I was like, ooh, okay. And, and eventually, uh, I got into explaining that I myself am a communicationist and she was like, Ooh, what is that? You know? And so, you know, I explain everything. And then we talk about that for like, basically until before we have to actually leave to go uh, see the movie. And, and so I didn't know how interested that she would become in this. Cause, uh, cause I find out like the next day at work that, she spent the whole night like on, on Google, like reading a bunch of articles, watching a lot of videos on like what is the unification church? 
And usually that spells disaster for anyone who does that. But this kid was like, ooh, okay, there's probably some more to this. Like, she looked past all the garbage, you know, that the media usually portrays us in, right? And and I was tell I was telling my mom this, and she, and she was like, it's like this, it's like, oh, this this girl is very prepared, dude. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and so he just kind of like spoke to me in in that particular moment that like, you know, I have to keep I have to keep doing this. I have to keep witnessing, you know, because if she's you know this interested and at this point learning a whole lot. You know, because because at this point it's about a week or so that we're t- that we're talking, and and I come to the conclusion that you know I have to keep doing this because who am I to say no, right? Because I'm I was just someone who just basically just appeared into her life, and she appeared into my life, you know, and. Yeah, so in that point on, it became very, you know, commonplace that we would we would hang out regularly. Uh, we explaining divine principle to her, learning more about her, uh, introducing her to carp very early on, and taking her to thrive and such, and you know, also uh, letting her hang out with my parents and such. And at that point, you know, it it. it <laughs> It, it kind of just became like a done deal. <laughs> I it was about like um I think it was about like in like towards the end of May because we met in April that she decided like like oh yeah I, I I love this I want to do this you know I'll keep doing this you know and and that kind of you know ig- ignited a, like a a flame in me um because at that point I was at the lowest point that I'd ever been in my life. A lot of, a lot of things that happened to me, uh, that made me question a lot of things, even question my own faith. Um, but you know, get, it's interesting because getting a, you know, attaining a spiritual child, you know, it's like, I assume it's like having a real child, you know, cause you kind of just forget about some of your pains, you know, and you just focus on giving life to your child. Right. And you know, and that's kind of the, and that's the experience that I've had for uh, basically until up in this point, you know, and in a way, I would say that in a way, I would say that she saved me too. You know, we like to think that, you know, we always be, we always be saving, you know, people from the, you know, from the fallen world and such, but, you know, in my, in my circumstance, she also saved me. Because, 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 yeah, what, what I was going through before, like, yeah, I didn't, I don't know if I could, you know, get myself out of that rut, but yeah, <laughs> sorry, folks. But yeah, it's, uh, it's about a year now, uh, since, since all that happened, uh, she's, Desiree, she's amazing. Uh, she's living at the Carp House now. Planning to go to Ocean Challenge is going to GPA, you know. So I'm a very happy dad. Can't really ask for much more. Um, except more kids, which uh, you know, I, I'm working on that. You know, I've determined myself and fully committed to the uh, Carp lifestyle, and my mom and I are working on developing Carp in Virginia. But um. Yeah, all in all, that's that's the story of how how Desiree Contreras became my spiritual daughter, and uh, yeah, she did mention yesterday that that uh, my birthday was was a uh, yesterday, and I always do reflect a lot on my birthdays. You know, like you know, what has God given me? What have uh, what have what have I yet to give? You know, what have I received? You know, and and I came to a very, it came to the conclusion that, that, my, that my daughter is the greatest gift that I've received so far. And that's something that I will hold on to 
you know, I'll hold on to that sentiment for basically until the end of time, you know. Incredible. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Jenas. Wow, you're really touching, really hot touching testimony. You just now say that not just only you save your spiritual trial, your spiritual trial save you. Yes, witness is something like that. Actually, we are trying to save the Cain, but actually Cain save me and understand more God, understand more people. Thank you so much, Janas uh, Rashi. I hope you can multiply more. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Kamsamida. Thank you. So much, so much, Zenas. Uh, I was just banging on my keyboard, taking a lot of notes. That was really excellent stuff there. Thank you. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, I hope you can take this in and uh, let's now take some time to reflect on today's message and sharing and come back in a few minutes.
Okay, brothers and sisters, hope you enjoyed your breakouts. And uh, to share first, let me invite up Mr. Peter Chikani. Yeah, good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, good morning, Dr. Young. And uh, good morning to mother and to parents. Um, <clears throat> actually, um, when I saw uh, um, uh, Reverend Mihan on my screen, uh, I was so emotional that I, I, I almost forgot to click on the join button because the brother, like two days in a row, I've been so emotional when uh, the Desiree and uh, Zenas Raj gave a, a testimony about witnessing. It just, I was, I think for two days, I've been uh, crying in the morning. I think for the first time in the longest time. Um, I started questioning myself, you know, what have I done, you know, as a first generation to reach that level to, you know, to touch other people's hearts. Um, Desiree and uh, the spiritual father, I'm so grateful. Um, you know, also Dr. Young uh, talked about, uh, I think the last sentence that he mentioned, um, he said, it is impossible to lay the foundation of substance beyond the foundation of faith. Um, on Sunday, I had opportunity to explain something to my friend because he never goes. He lives in Georgia and, and he is not a church member, but you know, I just felt that uh, I need to explain something to him. I asked him why he doesn't like to go to church. He said, um, he can't go to church because uh, uh, you know, even in the house, he can find God. But I explained to him the reason why we go to church. It's very easy for me to believe in God, which is foundation of faith. It's very easy. Anytime I can say I believe in God. But to believe in your brother and sister, it's very difficult. And that's the reason why we have to go to church. <laughs> all that foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I am so grateful, Dr. Young, mm -hmm. for this opportunity, more especially the living testimony. Mm -hmm. The last two days have been so touching. And thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much, Peter, for your beautiful reflection, also interpretation about the, why we need to go to church, a foundation of faith and foundation of substance. Thank you so much for your beautiful understanding. Kam God bless you. Thank you, Uncle Peter. You're sharing. I think many of us can feel the same way as you do. So thank you for sharing. And uh, next, let me invite up Mr. and Mrs. Kelvin and Hiromi Thurston. Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, brothers and sisters, and good morning, uh, Dr. Young. Yay! Uh, wow, thank you. <laughs> Uh, the, 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 the Thurston, yes. Uh, yeah. Actually, my first name is Kelvin. Yeah, Kelvin, okay. And um, yeah, this morning's uh, morning devotion I felt was really uh, deep and uh, important, as always, really. Uh, but especially when you spoke of the um, feeling or connecting to the heart of God, especially the sorrowful heart of God. Um, and how that feeling wells up in your heart. Um, I think that's an experience, I know myself, um, it's an experience that's very powerful and very deep. Uh, it's just a, a feeling, I, an experience I really feel that myself and, and perhaps many of us should, should try and, well, should feel more often. I, I don't know how well we can try and feel it because it's such a, it happens so spontaneously but it really uh, deepens our, our connection to God and life of faith. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important um, aspect of our life of faith. Wow, very and beautiful. And your inner, inner sharing. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go to Hiromisa. Okay. Uh, just I'm taking away, not just about one. Uh, so that was the witnessing is uh, inheriting God's heart, the line 
you told. Um, so through the testimony, the, uh, the person, uh, Gina, is suffering through the things, experiencing God's heart and be able to touch him, the G Gina. No, the, what's the Desri. Uh, Desri. Desri's uh, heart. They fit to connect and to, um, so that's kind of, uh, experience. Now, developing a kind of, um, touching heart to be able to care. So thank you very much. Yeah, Hiromi san, Kelvin san. 감사합니다. Your couple attending morning devotion together. God bless you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much for your sharing, uh, Thurston couple. Now, for our reminder today, we uh, always invite you to invite someone to morning devotion, especially the Zoom call. I think there's a lot of Holy Spirit exchange happening here. Um, you can also check out edu.familyfed.org to see uh, the transcripts and summaries of uh, the content shared here. And uh, lastly, to joyfully give from your heart, check out the link in the chat and online and offer a donation to receive even more blessing. Now for our musical offering, I'm very happy to welcome back up here, Uncle John Kirkley. Hello, can you hear me, Milhan? I can Mom hear you there. from Kenya. <laughs> Okay, um, I've sung a few songs uh, such as uh, Suzanne and Goodnight Irene that kind of have darker undertones. So for today and maybe the next couple of times, I'm going to lighten up and sing some love songs for our newly blessed couples. <laughs> and uh, it's just been utterly inspiring for an old 80-year-old guy like me to hear the testimony yesterday of Desiree Contreras and the testimony today of Zenas. So Zenas has a spiritual daughter, and then within a year, she got a spiritual child. So now Zenas is a spiritual grandfather, right? Just very quickly. At any rate. Um, this is a song about war and love with a shout out to Mulan, the great Chinese heroine. Um, but also, I would teach this song in my English classes, seven years in Korea, 13 years in China. I'm teaching poetry and rhyme and rhythm. So I think Lawrence Bear and maybe our Irishman and a few others are going to figure out why Johnny finally consents. The cruel war is raging. Johnny has to fight. I want to be with him from morning till night. I want to be with him. It grieves my heart so, won't you let me go with you? No, I love no. Tomorrow is Sunday, Monday is the day that your captain will call you and you must obey. Your captain will call you, it grieves my heart so, won't you let me go with you? No, my love, no. Dear Johnny, I feel you're unkind. I love you far better than all of mankind. I love you far better than words can ever express. 
Won't you let me go with you? Yes, my love, yes. Wow. Thank you so much. I love you better. I really love your missionary spirit. It is really amazing. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, when I also getting old and then how can a uh, resemble like you and go to the front line as a missionary? Wow, I love you, John Cockley. And today you offer us a beautiful song. I love you better. Thank you very much. A joyful song, love song he sang. <laughs> and uh, to close us out, can I invite up Uncle David Reed? Would you pray for us to close, please? Thank you so much for Dr. Young and all the brothers and sisters who oh, gathered here. Oh, Reed David, long time no see. <laughs> you? Happy to see you. Great. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so wonderful to see you every morning, Dr. Yeah, Young. Thank David. <laughs> thank you so much, brothers and sisters. Let us pray. Dearest beloved Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all the love that you have given us as blessed families, as blessed members attending our true parents. We are so grateful for today's testimonies and teaching we could feel your deep love through each and every word. Dearest Heavenly Father, we know how much you have invested in humanity in order for us to be restored and resurrected to the children that you want us to be. We pray for one another and most importantly, we pray for our true mother who is working on the front line of front lines, holding and carrying your heart, seeking to reconnect us to you and to all of humanity. We thank you for our leadership and we thank you for each brother and sister. And we pray for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father, once again for blessing us with a wonderful way to start our day and to bless our hearts and to heal our heart. And we pray for your liberation. We pray for the liberation of your heart and that we can carry that will and determination throughout our day and throughout our week. We offer this prayer to you, Heavenly Father, as blessed central families. And in the name of David Reed of the Reed Blessed Central Family, I pray and report. Amen and Aju. Oh, Aju. Wow. Thank you so much, Reed David. You are really beautiful. You know, prayer. Kamsamida. Thank you so much, Uncle David, for your prayer. And brothers and sisters, again, thank you for being a part of this wonderful experience today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Mm. Have a nice day. Thank you.